What's up, family? It is your man, CRB Jr., Cordy Robert Brown Jr., here at Motown Mafia Podcast, of course, presented by Big Boss Filmworks, here with my other half, the other partner that has made Big Boss Filmworks what it is, Brother Lou. What it do? What it do, fam? Good? I'm good, brother. All right. Oh, yeah. So, um, so let's get to it, Lou. So, um, yeah, we're talking about uh, Sylvester today. Sylvester Seal Murray. Um, big fella. A big fella's big fella. Mm-hmm. There's a line, and, and um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll circle back to it. Uh, well, first, let me go into um, it's a for Seal Murray is one of those guys um, that for a long time was a big fella in this town. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me just preface that um, from all I've heard, Seal has done his time. He's out. He's a legitimate businessman now doing some positive things in the community so let's, shout let's, out let's let's put that out there now that he's uh, doing some things um, in real estate and, and, and in the nonprofit space and that, so we're just we're recording nothing but history this is all of course his situation was completely litigated and uh, his debts to society have been paid so shout out to Sylvester Sil Murray and glad Big to see shout. You, um, the way that he's transcended into doing some other positive things and uh, not leaving a legitimate footprint is a good thing. Which brings us into a uh, future post. We'll be doing the uh, top, I think I it's think the- you called it the- um, Yeah, top five or top 10, ten reformed, reformed hustlers. Or, or try, and I think we should, it's not even reformed, because a hustler is a hustler. A hustler, yeah, yeah, yeah. let me take hustler. that back, yeah. A hustler is a hustler. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, again, I never considered myself a gangster. I don't think my father ever considered himself a gangster. He considered himself a hustler. A hustler. And he taught me how to be a hustler. And now we just, we don't hustle illicit, illicit things. We hustle real estate. We hustle hair. Um, we hustle content. Yeah. Uh, we hustle advice. Yeah. Uh, but we still hustling. Yeah, because what, what back in the old days, before you know the the lore of the name and how it got mixed up with gangster, hustling just mean you had something you were doing to make some money. Yeah, I mean, and again, my my definition in my day, um, when a guy was a hustler, it meant he probably worked at the plant. Yep. Might have booked some numbers. Mm-hmm. Might have ran some after hour joints. Yeah. Uh, changed toilets. Yeah. Cut grass. Yeah. Um, knew how to put in the heat and cooling. He could fix your furnace. Yeah. He was a hustler. Yeah. He he might any you know he would like the character from um, that show Good Times back in the day. Book lucky man. no Lucky Lenny. If I ain't got it, it ain't many. <laughs> I remember Lenny. Lenny, if I ain't <laughs> Lucky Lenny. If I ain't got it, it ain't many. A hustler. He might you know a real hustler. You know whether you call him about the bag. Mm-hmm. Or your your electricity, your toilet backed up. Mm-hmm. He on the spot. He, just he trying, on it. He trying to get money. That's he, right. He don't care what you talking about. If it's <laughs> prof, if it's a profitable endeavor. Yeah. And um, he in it. So yeah. So I, I don't think it's reform. I think it would be hustlers that just transition. There you go. Or elevate, better choice of ele- word. Elevated their hustle. Yeah. Um, because, uh, spoiler spoiler alert, you know, I think the number one guy from that is married to that lady Beyonce who's kind of famous. Yeah. He's a guy who used to yeah, kind of sell, yeah, he's sell, a, sell crack and has transitioned into a kind of different life for himself. There you go. That whole clique, in fact, is a real spoiler alert. Uh, all three of the founding members of that um, company, Rockefeller Records. Oh, yeah, Records, Rockefeller all Records. Come, all come out the streets and... You look at how all those guys, that would be Brother Dame Dash, who's been one of my business role models, even though he's a couple years younger than me. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always just been admired. And my and, you know, holds music, of course, I've been a lifelong fan. And Dame's business acclimate, um, and their other brother, Big Spurt. Um, all those guys, what they're doing yeah. now at this stage of their life and where they come from, um, really shows. So on that note, back to Seal, you know. So Seal's doing some positive things now that we, we, we are told. Um, but in his day, going back to the 70s and surely mm-hmm. in the 80s, he was a big fella's big fella. Okay. Um, in fact, in the movie Roland, um, that talks a little bit about Seal, um, uh, done by, uh, one of our business associates, Alan, Al Prophet. Uh, shout out to Al, shout out to America Dope, shout out to Scott. Big up. Um, Scott Bernstein. Um, 
it's narrated by a brother by the name of Brett, Brett Goodwin. Um, shout out to uh, Five, shout out to the whole YBI crew and that, that Dexter crew. Um, Brett does the narration of Roland, and when he is asked about Sylvester Seal Murray, he calls him a poor hustler's dream. And what Brett is saying when he calls Seal a poor hustler's dream is uh, a guy whose money was was funny and just somehow couldn't get couldn't get on. Mm-hmm. Seal was the kind of big fella that look, man, take the bag, get some work, man. Get get yourself together, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna sweat you, but just take the bag and get yourself together. And when I heard that, it reminded me. I was like, oh, I guess Pops was a poor hustler's dream too, because yeah. in that same era, you know, guys were just different than with big mm-hmm. fellas, you know. Yeah. Like, look, man, get, take this boy and get yourself together. Get you just, I'm going to give you your shot. Cut different. Cut different. So, yeah, that was a great line uh, that Brett said in there, that Seal Murray, a poor hustler's dream. Um, but so he was a big fella mm-hmm. doing his thing. Um, rumor has it that he was always, that he'd gotten tied into that Eastern Market connection. Okay. So he's operating at an exceptionally high level. Um, there's some content that Al actually did with... Uh, Doc Davis. Now, is that the uh, connection with uh, Wakefield? No, the Eastern Mark connector are, are Italian friends. Oh, okay. Okay. The Italian friends. Um, Seal was, was tied in with, 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 uh, with the Italians. It yeah, is rumor, and I believe even probably documented, um, was, was the source of his plug. Okay. Um, and, you know, those people are very selective about who they do business with in our community. Definitely. <laughs> um, so Seal's doing his thing. He's already a big fella in, in, in the circles, uh, and as it should be, the only people who knew really his name was other other big fellas, right? Um, Doc Davis speaks about some of that content he did with Al, how you know, um, Seal during that YBI run was turning in a million dollars a week. Okay. Because Doc comes from he's basically collecting a million dollars a week from the Pony Crew and another million dollars a week from the YBI crew. But the only people from that whole YBI situation that Doc would deal with was Seal. Okay. So Seal had his own thing, plugged with, with some of those uh, people. And then Seal was also plugged in with Doc Davis. And those who know, know that story, check it out. Uh, just look up American Dope, Doc Davis. Another Detroit phenomenal hustler in his day. Yeah. Um, and Seal, Seal and Doc did some ridiculous numbers together, right? That, that you can you know hear hear it straight out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. So, but when Seal's name starts to ring, is when he hooks up with Butch Jones and that YBI crew. Okay. And he becomes, for a while, I think the primary supplier through Mr. Jones of that YBI situation, right? Um, And unfortunately for him, that notoriety and his affiliation with that YBI situation leads to him, which he had done a successful job of prior, getting on the the authorities' radar, right? Mm. Um, You know, and Seal actually did a little time with the old man. They had a good, good, good relationship. Oh, okay. When Seal, in fact, was going in on that YBI case, uh, Pops was on his way out. And their, mm. paths, their paths crossed in Milan. <laughs> Those guys, I think their paths may have crossed in prison was, another, uh, another yeah. time. Oh, okay, okay. But they, did they ever do any kind of business together? No, 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 no. no, no. Just um, big fellow respect. Just big fellow respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they, but their report was, was 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 a good report. It was intact. Yeah, um, and not directly because it's Detroit, you know. So that means his cousins and friends do business with our cousins and friends, even if they're not directly doing business together, especially right. in those days. Um, so when that YBI indictment comes down, in a lot of ways, it was really a, a Seal Murray indictment. Mm. You know, um, mm-hmm. he was at the top of that food chain. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a classic one going back to a post we did not too long ago, man, about it. More money, more problems. Oh, yeah. You know, because Seal didn't need the YBI business to 
be living large. Mm -hmm. But that was a lot of money to be passing up. You know, when you're handling a bag like that and you run into some people who moving it the way that that Dexter crew was moving it, um, it's hard to turn down that kind of clientele. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so he made a lot more money, but why did he bring himself a lot more problems? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I, get, I know he's uh, living a legitimate businessman life. Uh, I don't bring this up to, to rehash. Just again, hey, it's all been in the papers and completely litigated. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love one day for him or any of his people who are really close to him to have them on the pod. That would be cool. Yeah, because again, I think the day's going to come very, very shortly where these Detroit stories are going to follow up as far as national exposure like the BMF story from the 90s and the early 2000s is doing now. Uh, we know for a fact that there are kind of, there's some big people interested in Detroit and that era. Yeah. And you, you know, you could and they would if other people are not involved. If the other people are 100% involved, a man like Seal Murray's name might not even come up. And that yeah. would be so historically inaccurate and just not right. That'd be a disservice. Uh, to, 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 to the legacy of the Detroit street scene. Um, so so I, I say I that to that him and to any of his people. I mean, again, you, uh, your debt to society's being paid. Um, when it comes to this street thing, you are a Detroit legend. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Sylvester Seal Murray. Um, another just, just fascinating, fascinating character um, from that era, man. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you had you heard. When did you when did you first hear that name? When I heard from the name, I was running through just in research, you know, because I'm looking the, the documentary series called The Real Ones. I'm working on right now. I've released a couple of episodes. One from uh, Big Ed Hansard and uh, Maserati Rick. You guys saw it. Uh, if not, check it out. I'll leave a link in the uh, description so you can take a peek at it. And he was another principal member of the Detroit crime, you know, thing that was happening in the 80s. And I yeah. wanted to cover. And yeah. then, yeah. You, you know. can't do the history of the 80s in this thing uh, and not bring his name up. Yeah, a lot like Bernstein kept hearing you guys in the, you know, on the radar when he first started doing his right. thing, well, you know. We'll repeat it for that again. Shout out to Scott Bernstein. Um, was consulting on BMF season one, mm -hmm. uh, consulted on the White Boy Rick movie. Yes. Uh, doing some big things, you know, we talked about. Check her out if you're going out with a catalog or a library. This guy got a lot of interesting things going on. Definitely. Um, but he was saying, yeah, back when this all first started, he was interviewing actually a Southfield policeman. Yes. And he's interviewing him about Frank Nitty Usher. Rest in peace, RIP Frank Nitty Usher. Um, Marzette and a few other people mm -hmm. from that era. Yeah. And the Southfield cop says, oh, you're talking about uh, big time guys from the 70s. Whatever happened to uh, Eddie Jackson and Courtney Brown? And Scott was like, who are they? And the cop told him basically straight no chaser. You can't talk about the 1970s and Detroit Kingpins if you're not talking about Eddie Jackson and Courtney and what these guys That's right. Were. You know, he's like, they were, they were it. And that led Scott down the rabbit hole that eventually has us cross paths with him. Mm -hmm. Because as fate would have it, he worked with Al and Roland right when we were getting our thing going. Roland was being released. Mm -hmm. um, and this is when I spoke to Al that first time, he was actually doing the release that day. And he says, you know, uh, we got newspaper articles with your dad and your dad's man Eddie in it. And then when we first met Scott, he was like, Oh, this is so fortuitous. I, you, I've been hearing, I started, this cop told me about mm -hmm. your dad and Eddie, mm -hmm. and then I started doing my research, and everybody else in the city knows, who knows about these things, knows the legend of Eddie the Fat Man Jackson, and, um, you know, the rest of it's yeah. Big Boss Filmworks is, is history concerning, really bringing that story back out to light, and um, all that all stuff. That stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's a everybody wanted their story being told. Everybody's story has some validity to it, but Mr. Murray's story is one that really stands out. He did it at a level that really the air gets thin when you talk about the heights, yeah. the heights that Mr. Murray was putting his thing down. 
Right, absolutely. So for you guys who are into that kind of stuff, um, yeah, yeah, check out Rolling uh, by Al Prophet. Check out some stuff that Scott Bernstein has done. Yeah, Detroit um, Mob Confidential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, just to understand like that Eastern Market connection that yeah. that Mr. Murray had. So we just here just trying to bring out the history, history, man. You know, yeah. uh, we believe history. If you know more, you do more. If you know better, you do better. time to really tell a great untold Detroit story because it kind of covers Detroit at its at its zenith. Very interesting story. We decided that we were going to make a movie. All right, Rich Rossi with you and with Motown Mafia. I'm with Courtney Lewis Stevens. Lewis Stevens, Courtney Brown. Uh, Courtney Brown Jr. And uh, Alan Al Prophet Bradley. And this is an entrepreneurial, inspirational story too because again, you know, I'm a real estate retail guy. You know, that's what my skill set is. Um, but I'm a businessman, so I was like, you know, we just, we're gonna do it. You know, sometimes when you got a dream, you won't have all the answers on how you're gonna do what you're gonna do. But what made this one unique was not so much the crime, but the intertwining with Detroit's history and the Motown era and kind of the economic decline of Detroit. And it's really the story of uh, a family and, from some perspectives, it has a happy ending, like you said. For others, it didn't have a happy, <laughs> happy ending. Right, right.